Okay, why would anyone spend a thousand dollars on a mechanical keyboard? Uh, I like the Apple one. We just got an interview with Teha Types. Thank you to Shopify for sponsoring a portion of this video. Okay, so if you Google answer in progress, one of the first autocompletes you get is about mechanical keyboards. Oh. It used to be, I promise. Sabrina's got one, I've got one, Melissa's got one, and I like my mechanical keyboard, but I don't actually know anything about mechanical keyboards. I just Googled keyboards and bought one that looked nice. Turns out it was a mechanical keyboard and it is nice to type on. But I'm not alone in my newly discovered love of mechanical keyboards. It seems like more and more people in recent years are buying mechanical keyboards. And recently on my travels on the internet, I came across these channels, forums, websites, dedicated to customizing mechanical keyboards and building luxury mechanical keyboards. I also saw that some of these keyboards were going for thousands of dollars. So what's the fascination with this old fashioned technology? Why is it coming back into popularity? And most importantly, why would someone spend a thousand dollars on a keyboard? Let's figure it out. So there isn't a book I could just read about mechanical keyboards to make an elaborate book report. And in my research, reading articles and watching YouTube videos, I was able to learn the technical terms in the hobby, but I felt like I was still missing something. I feel like just by doing some Googling and searching online, I haven't really been able to find what's at the heart of this mechanical keyboard hobby and also what makes people really enthusiastic about mechanical keyboards and spend a lot of money on a good mechanical keyboard. So I have a plan. It's a very complicated plan. It's a very ingenious plan. And it's one that no one has ever thought of before. I'm going to ask someone. I get a lot of comments of people saying, oh, I watched one video of yours and thought nothing of it. And then six months later, I've got 10 keyboards. And I'm kind of like, Sorry. <laughs> this is David, otherwise known as Glasses. He has a YouTube channel where he builds mechanical keyboards and generally causes chaos. Oh, screw it. Congratulations. First of all, if you recognize this place. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. No, you don't. So I thought we'd start with looking at my keyboards, the ones that I've had so far, getting your impressions of them, seeing what you like, what you don't like. My first keyboard was the Apple one, you know? I like it. There is like no travel here. It's like you're tapping on a billet of aluminium. I like that it's tactile. So so what is tactility? It's like the little pop that you get when you... It's like that little, that feedback you feel when you press down, a little bump that usually aligns with when the switch actuates. So I like that, but besides that, I hate everything else about this. Yeah, well, I like it. That's all that matters. No, that's not true. So my first mechanical keyboard was this one. Mechanical switches. Let's actually see what they are. Jamie Reds, like 75% layout as well. Everyone in my house complained because it was really loud. Oh, this is loud. This was loud. I think my standard for loud is. <laughs> so I went from that to this, you know, a little quieter, and no one in my house complains anymore. Okay, so, so problem solved. Problem solved. So we're done. Okay, yeah. The stabilizers are a little bit better. Um, they're still. Um... So still not a fan. Still not a fan, okay. but I like it more. That's the end of my keyboard journey. Mm -hmm. And so now- This is the start of your keyboard journey. And so you've got some keyboards that you wanna- Whoa. Okay, <laughs> so it's, he oh, it's really heavy. It's got a two piece aluminum case and inside it has an internal brass weight. Ooh, okay. I don't know what these are called, like the non-square. So these are the modifiers. These are called modifiers. The yeah. non-square ones <laughs> feel a lot better. We'll keep it going. Okay, yeah. this is a linear mm -hmm. and then this is a tactile. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like bubble wrap. That's actually not a bad description. Like you kind of have to build up to it and yeah. it just collapses in it. So it's like... difficult to explain like the feeling of, <laughs> of things on camera. It is, isn't it? Yeah, the, the space bar is so nice. That's <laughs> sick. I love this. This is the next one. Wow, this is really quiet. Dress up as that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every single one I'm like, wow. <laughs> this doesn't have any of the keys. This is like half a keyboard. Oh, this is a 60%. So this is the Cherry MX Browns. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that I'm most impressed with by mm -hmm. is just the space bars. It's such a world of difference from like... <laughs> horrific. I feel like a hipster. I love the, the look of this one. I would feel that like my fingers would get tired after a while of these. And then you just have this one M key. <laughs> I can now understand now that I'm here, they feel different. So I have a different like response to them. This is an SGI granite. Okay. Instead of MX switches, these have out switches. And these are switches that don't exist anymore. Oh, these are really nice. I feel like the secretary in Monsters Inc. That's I'm that's watching you with that. How do I, how do I, how do I get into this? Because I've clearly been doing something wrong in that like... <laughs> All of these come from a custom kit. In the hobby, when we say a kit, we basically mean it's a case, a PCB, 
and a plate and you then buy your own stabilizers, switches and keycaps and you basically build that keyboard from the ground up. Okay, so, keyboard. Yeah, I wanna use this keyboard afterwards. Okay, so mechanical keyboards are made up of a few key components. You've got the uh, PCB, the casing, the plate, which kind of make up the brains and the body of the keyboard. The casing sort of houses all of the components, while the PCB is the actual electronic circuit that communicates with your computer. Every time one of the switches is pressed down, it completes a small electronic circuit which sends a signal to your computer to let it know that one of the keys has been pressed. But then you get to the more exciting parts of a mechanical keyboard, the keycap and the key switches. The keycap is what you would normally think of when you think of a key in a keyboard. And learning more about this, you can get these in a variety of different shapes, sizes, materials. Basically anything that can be customized can be customized about a keycap. There's even a thriving community of artisan keycaps, which are one of a kind sort of unique art pieces that you can have as keycaps. And in the process of researching this video, I did order some new keycaps which was fun. And in the process of ordering that stuff, I ended up discovering this app by the sponsor of this video, Shopify. So I decided to ask them if I could just talk about the app instead of doing a normal ad read. And they said yes, so now I'm just gonna do that instead. If you haven't heard of Shopify, it's a platform, you can build an online store, it's very intuitive, there's templates, it's drag and drop, it's really good. However, okay, so basically they have this app called Shop and what it does is it basically unifies all of your orders into one app. It plugs into your emails and finds the order numbers and like you can click through and you can see all the details. Everything that you need is right there and you don't have to go into your emails and find the tracking number and then look at a website that was developed by one guy in 2007. We love it. You can ask it to send notifications when stuff is shipped, there's any delays, the whole Shebang. The app also surfaces returns policies, so it becomes really easy to be able to just see if you can still return something, if it's in shipping, or even if it's arrived. It's all in the app, and it's great. So basically, it's the best app if you shop online. You can find more information about Shopify and the Shop app in the link in the description. So thank you to Shopify for sponsoring this video and letting me talk to you about my favorite new app instead of doing a typical ad read and on with the rest of the video. But pretty keycaps aren't the only exciting part of a mechanical keyboard. What's underneath it, the key switch, is arguably just as interesting. This little thing is what makes a mechanical keyboard, well, mechanical. When I spoke to Glasses about these little things, I started to realize the incredible history that goes with them. It's hard to pinpoint the objective origin of mechanical keyboards. Manufacturers were experimenting with a variety of mechanical mechanisms. As time progressed, computers were no longer room-sized machines owned by large corporations and universities. They became smaller and more affordable. This meant more demand for keyboards, so manufacturers looked to increase production rates and cut costs. This resulted in membrane keyboards, which used cheaply produced sheets of rubber rather than individual switches. Well, I mean, that was the take. These cheap membrane keyboards produced a mushy, rubbery feeling rather than a satisfying click of a mechanical switch. This new form of keyboard was marketed as a quieter typing experience, but its main popularity was driven by its price. While many mechanical keyboard companies folded or switched to producing membrane keyboards, companies like Cherry, now the most popular switch manufacturer in the world, continued producing mechanical switches. While the typing experience worsened due to membrane keyboards, it generally didn't matter to most people. Personal computers were still seen as a productivity tool, like a wrench or a hammer, and used for professional work rather than a personal electronic device. So buying keyboards at an accessible price for home and offices was the main concern. However, as we began to use these devices outside of work, and as our lives and identities intertwined themselves with technology, people started to view their devices as an extension of themselves, personalizing their devices to suit their needs. As a result, in the late 2000s, early signs of the modern keyboard hobby started to flourish in Korean on-the-desk forums. This is considered by many as the start of the modern keyboard hobby. So the boards on the OTD forums were only ever sold in Korea and in limited run manufacturing. But in time, the US got their own forums and it's on these forums that people started to experiment with the characteristics of different switches. And what they found is if they
they combined different pieces from different switches, they could create a Frankenstein switch. Ooh. And it's from this type of experimentation that we got fan favorite Frankenstein switches like the Holy Panda. So the Holy Panda started off as a Frankenstein switch where people would have to take two different switches and put them together to make them. But because of their popularity, people started to manufacture the specifications of a Holy Panda as one whole switch. The creation of Holy Pandas, I guess, accidentally created the switch that everybody wanted to try. One of the main sound tests and ways people probably heard of a Holy Panda, as I kind of mentioned, was mine as well, was the Taya Type sound test, which was his feel with Holy Pandas. So much so that most people say, you know, you watch this video once and you're done, you know, you're into the hobby, into the rabbit hole. That really set it sky highest, like the first big Frankenstein switch. Okay, so during this time, the mechanical keyboard started to become really popular with gamers. It kind of makes sense because those are the types of people to spend a lot of money on computer hardware to have their optimal gaming setup for their zero millisecond lag response time so they can get owned in Valorant bronze lobbies. And with the rise of popularity in the gaming community, we saw a massive boom in a type of switch called the Cherry MX switch. If you've ever tried to buy a keyboard online, you were probably given the option of a Cherry MX switch, whether it was a red switch, a blue switch, or a brown switch. I don't think too many people would fight you on saying that Cherry MX or Cherry as a brand are probably the most important player in mechanical keyboards and now has become the de facto. The Cherry MX patent expiring was probably the most important milestone for the explosion of boutique switches in the hobby. The Cherry patent expiring was a game changer, an environment modifier, a different gravy. Because now that the original patent had expired, you could take the original design and you could modify it and remix it. And then you have a new switch built different. And this caused the rise of new manufacturers such as Gatoron making new switches in the Cherry MX style without getting sued, which is always good, I guess. But also we saw the rise of smaller community vendors such as Zeal and Novel Keys. And so we got this whole new wave of innovation of people making modified Cherry MX style switches. People really liked the Ergo Clear, but didn't like the effort you had to go to make them. You know, you needed two sets of keyboards or you needed to open it and put in a spring. And Zeal basically said, okay, I'm gonna go make the first manufacturer community made custom line of switches. That switch was so, so, so important because it was the first switch that was community made. And now we get to the craziest part of this whole story, the Stelios controversy. Bum, bum, bum. So basically Zeal, one of the community manufacturers, was creating this switch called the Zelio. It was a boutique switch that was sold through a variety of different marketplaces. So basically Zeal would tell a bunch of marketplaces that they were allowed to resell the switch that they were producing. However, one of these marketplaces was selling counterfeit Zelios. Bum, bum, bum. So they were actually an official reseller of Zelios. However, they were selling more than they were supplied by Zeal. So they were getting some knockoff Zelios from somewhere. But the counterfeit Zelios, otherwise known as Stelios, because they stole the design of it, you get the picture, were almost identical in feel, experience, and design, to the point where it was so hard to tell the difference. And the quality was basically the same as well. So people started wondering, who was the manufacturer behind the Stelios, the fake Zelios? I guess if you can produce such high quality counterfeits, you can produce your own genuine boutique switches. And that's exactly what happened. So many more people saw the quality in the Stelios and decided to make their switches from that manufacturer. Literally, crime does pay. What is this story? And that takes us all the way up to now. There's been this explosion of switch designs and a lot more manufacturers, and the whole scene is bursting with unique designs and new and exciting ways to try out the hobby. There's different form factors, different tactile feedback, and custom and artisan keycaps. And seriously, if you haven't built your own keyboard, I strongly recommend it. It's not as hard as you think, and you really end up with this thing that you can really say, you know, I built this thing that I now use to type on every day. It's really cool. Nowadays, you can go online and design a board that looks nothing like anyone has ever seen before or build a board that reflects your personality. And now it's my turn. So what are we what are we building? Which ones do you feel you're kind of more drawn to? Let's just eliminate a few. So I'm trying to find my favorite switch. Mm. Okay. How do I do this? 
uh, you type on them and then you type on them some more and you keep typing on them until there's one that just shines above the rest of them. I'm like hypnotized by this. <laughs> it's good, isn't I it? I was like, uh, this sounds like walking on snow in Minecraft. I think this one's gotta go. I'm gonna get rid of this. It's just not satisfying, the fire. I think honestly, this is the better feeling key keyboard to me. This is like popping bubble wrap all day, mm. and that is a very nice feeling. So I think I think I'm gonna go for this one as my favorite. Winner. Yeah, I mean I guess the closest thing we can build your keyboard then will be these holy pandas, which Ooh. So these are the holy pandas I've been hearing so much about. Okay. If I'm honest, they just look like any other switch to me. I'm excited. Cool. Today, we are building this Glacier 80 TKF Dudionis. Okay. It's a very fancy box. Oh, it's lots. Doing unboxing on the Answer in Progress YouTube channel. What's going on? What am <laughs> okay. I looking at? So, this is foam. This is more foam. Okay. This is more foam. This is our PCB. This is kind of our... This is the brains. Brains of the keyboard. Oh, it's hot swap. Okay, that's not a problem. So this is... Oh my god. I'm gonna have to stand up for this. <laughs> this is really heavy. Mm. This is a real keyboard. Uh, now we have to stab this open. <laughs> there you go. So the first thing we need to do when building a keyboard is to prepare our components. So these are our stabilizers. So like... The space bar doesn't wobble because yes, of this. Exactly. Okay. We want to increase smoothness. Yeah. And we want to remove rattle. <laughs> I'm so scared of breaking it. Honestly, you won't break it. And if you do, we have more. <laughs> okay, these ones are a bit fiddly. Let me do this one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you actually need to snap this off because it's two individual ones that will connect by cable. I was scared of breaking <laughs> these. <laughs> Yeah. Now it's the fun part. We get to put a switch okay. on. What exactly are we doing? So I, <laughs> I'm just pressing a button. I'm pressing it. Make sure it feels consistent throughout the press. Make sure there's no like, ticking on the edges. Okay. So this will probably be the part where you speed up 14,000 percent. I think it'll be funner if you just cut on every. Like, just like this is the last one. Mm -hmm. Done. Jeez. Completed keyboard, guys. Yeah. Uh, mm. oh. That is a pretty cute one. Okay, keycaps. Eight, six, seven, eight. Well, actually, seven, eight, nine. But, oh. It's the wrong eight, also. Oh. It's the lump well, eight. I tried. Q, W, E, R, T, Y, Z. I, I, I have B, and I want to put it next to A. So <laughs> I think these are the real, the real winners. Okay. Yeah, before I... Yeah. We did it. So this is my new cable keyboard. Mm, cable. This is your new cable. In comparison to my first ever keyboard. Let's, let's take that away from me. My first foray into mechanical keyboards. For context, I'm not like doing this softly and this hard. Whenever I whenever I watch these videos online, I always think, oh, they're really they're really hamming this one up, and then they're they're like going soft on that. That's not true. I think the stabilizers are probably the biggest difference. It's an easy mod you can do to any keyboard, really. Once your ears are open to rattle, you can't unhear it. Like, yeah. if you don't know it's there, you probably don't care. Yeah. But once someone tells you it exists and it doesn't have to, it's game over. I guess I'm done with this keyboard. <laughs> do you know why I typed? Please subscribe to across this channel. I actually did type. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Oh! To the glasses channel. Thanks for thanks for doing this. No worries. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Yeah. Can, can I keep this? Yeah, sure. Just pay me uh, the amount for the keyboard, and we can, you know. How how much is this keyboard? Probably like six fifty dollars. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So be sure to subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> Okay, I was just about to finish work, but then I got an email from the king of mechanical keyboards himself. We just got an interview with Teha Types. Oh my god! Hello, how's it going? Hi, nice to meet you, Teha. Uh -huh. This is Teha Types, arguably one of the most influential mechanical keyboards creators on YouTube. He has sound tests for seemingly every switch on the market and has built luxury mechanical keyboards for the likes of Lily Pichu, Dave2D, and Tifu. So basically, I've been on a 
mechanical keyboard's journey for the last month or two. Okay. Um, oh, so you're really fresh. I'm really fresh, <laughs> yeah. Here's like the central question of the video. This is where I started okay. from. Why would anyone spend a thousand dollars on a keyboard? <laughs> yeah, I think something that I've just come to realize is there are certain things in my life that I use quite a lot. I have a Herman Miller Aeron chair, and most people would say, you know, why would you spend that much on a chair? But like, if you think about it, we're, at least for me, I'm sitting on a chair, you know, more than half of my day sometimes. So why not invest in that? And as someone who does, you know, spend their time in front of a keyboard for many hours a day, I'm constantly typing. Um, I, I think it is, people used to not think of the keyboard as something that could be invested in. But with, with the recent uh, popularity that this hobby has seen, I think many many of us are starting to realize, you know, the keyboard can be something that's pleasant. I definitely didn't realize how much of a difference the, the custom mechanical keyboard or even a modded mechanical keyboard is from just off the shelf mechanical keyboards. The keyboard hobby is just one of those hobbies where you have to try it in person to really understand, I feel like. Like no matter how many videos you watch, like no matter how many sound tests you listen to, nothing really beats trying it and experiencing it in person. I kind of went through what you went through too. After I filled my first one, I was like, okay, this is addicting. <laughs> I, yeah. I see why people spend a lot on their keyboards. Why do you think the hobby is like exploded in popularity? I mean, I think my Tfue video definitely helped. He is still probably one of the biggest names in esports. I, th I think the pandemic hit three or four months after my Tfue build came out and everyone started to work from home. And I, I think people overall were just consuming more content during the pandemic. Uh, people started to care about their work setups, I guess, because everyone's working from home. They want to treat themselves a little bit. Everyone's socially deprived. They're trying to feel something through retail therapy. So uh, <laughs> uh, I think the pandemic for sure also played a great part in the recent rise of the hobby. I think also, I think there was a lot of people during the pandemic who had never ever thought about a work setup. Like they right, always right. worked in a library or in mm. an office. It's an interesting time for newcomers. I, f I feel like it's both a great and a bad time for people trying to get into the hobby at the moment. The hobby's kind of going through <laughs> a uh, growing pain phase as everyone's trying to scale up to accommodate for this influx of demand. There is that customer experience aspect that might rub people the wrong way. One of, one of the first confusing terms you might hear in the hobby is uh, the word group buy. And that's what the hobby operates on largely still. You can think of a group buy essentially as kind of a Kickstarter or Indiegogo project. Basically individuals in the hobby essentially putting out a project idea. We're not mass producing these keyboards, right? It's individuals running their own projects. It can take months, sometimes years. We are seeing years timelines now at this point for certain projects. You need to have a lot of patience in this hobby. You should expect at least half a year minimum just to call it safe as of now. What do you think is the future of the mechanical keyboard hobby? I think there's still a ton to be explored with switches. Everyone is still so hooked onto the Cherry MX design style. I think it's going to be interesting to see the new types of switches that come out, for example. I mean, I'd love to see crazier keyboard designs. <laughs> I mean, who knows, maybe we'll have like an SD card reader or extra USB ports on a keyboard one day. Uh, meetups. Maybe now's not the greatest time to advocate for meetups, but like I got a lot of questions saying like, oh, like where do you find these meetups? Like, how do I go to a meetup? Honestly, like if you have an interest in running a meetup, I would say go for it. Everyone's just looking for someone to take that initiative. So if there are no meetups in your area that you know of, like feel free to organize something. Like it's still a very friendly and community oriented hobby. Meetups sound really exciting. Like I've never been to a meetup. Yeah. The only person I've met who's interested in mechanical keyboards is glasses. Um, <laughs> uh, you kind of had a me mini meetup there too. I yeah, think. yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess I never really thought about going to a meetup. It was like, oh, meetups sound really cool, but yeah, it's probably for it's probably for people who know about keyboards. That, I mean, that was me too. I mean, it feels it still feels nerdy to say I'm going to a, a keyboard meetup. <laughs> but I, I think the first one that I went to just really left a nice impression on me. Just like how friendly everyone was. Just being able to try and even like just touch all of these nice, pretty products that I've been seeing online. Hopefully, if the, once the world opens up more, we'll have more of those. But if you can go to a meetup, highly recommend you do. Meetups are probably the greatest, the next big thing for uh, 
raising even more awareness of the hobby. Okay, so in the process of making this video, I've been trying to figure out how to explain why the mechanical keyboard hobby is so appealing. And I think it's everything that everyone has mentioned already. It's the fact that you can build a keyboard that is completely unique to yourself. But it's also the fact that a custom mechanical keyboard is just so much better than anything you can find off the shelf. And with how digital our lives are and how much time we spend at our computers, having a lovely keyboard that looks and feels like yours has brought a small joy into a part of my life that is usually so mundane. But honestly, it's been really hard to describe to people why this hobby is so appealing. But once you put a custom mechanical keyboard in front of someone and they type on it, I think you get it immediately. Everyone I've shown my keyboard to has said, yeah, I get it now. But also just personally, with technology becoming increasingly proprietary and sealed off, and with big tech companies consuming basically the whole of the technological world, seeing the mechanical keyboard hobby remain a small community of designers, hobbyists, and enthusiasts, just making keyboards because they love it has been a breath of fresh air and I think that's beautiful. And yeah, while you can spend a thousand dollars on a mechanical keyboard, you don't have to. You can build a nice custom mechanical keyboard for a lot less than that and it'll last you for years. And honestly, I would recommend buying at least one custom mechanical keyboard in your life because it's such a unique experience. In fact, in the process of making this video, our editor Joe built his own custom mechanical keyboard for the first time. And I think he agrees, it's just something that you have to try to really get. It is so cool, and he didn't even mention the lights. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you like what we do, you can support us on Patreon. And if you don't have a couple of dollars to spare, you can subscribe to our newsletter where we give out free bonus stuff, playlists, and potentially some keyboard ASMR. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keyboards.